If you're a diabetic with deep concerns about fruit consumption, you got to watch this video. I'll be explaining what causes diabetes, the dynamics of blood sugar spikes, and how fruit affects your metabolism as a diabetic. First, we have to start with what causes diabetes. We'll start with type one. Type one diabetes is an autoimmune disease that destroys the insulin producing beta cells of the pancreas. This inhibits your body's ability to produce insulin needed to shuttle glucose into your cells for energy. And as a result, blood sugar levels rise and remain elevated to an excessive degree. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, is actually caused by an excessive buildup of fat in your blood and inside your cells. This leads to a metabolic dysfunction known as lipotoxicity. The massive blood sugar spikes and perpetually high blood sugar is actually not caused by sugar at all. Improving your blood sugar and even reversing diabetes requires a diet and lifestyle that is geared towards improving insulin sensitivity rather than one that just avoids foods or any foods that would potentially cause a blood sugar spike. This applies to not only type 2 diabetics, but also type 1 diabetics. Your blood sugar level is influenced largely by how responsive your cells are to insulin trying to shuttle glucose into your cells. High responsiveness to insulin is what we call high insulin sensitivity. Low responsiveness to insulin is what we call insulin resistance. Higher insulin sensitivity makes insulin much more potent meaning you actually need a much smaller dosage of insulin for it to achieve its effects in shuttling glucose into your cells, causing you to have much better blood sugar numbers straight across the board. Insulin resistance causes insulin to be much less effective, driving the need for a higher dosage of insulin in order to bring your blood sugar down. Insulin sensitivity is just a natural human adaptation that's caused by a diet where most of the energy comes from carbohydrates. And believe it or not, but cutting carbohydrates and increasing dietary fat can actually lead you deeper into insulin resistance. Think of an athlete training to be a better jumper. That athlete will have to frequently and consistently practice jumping. Avoiding jumping for whatever reason will only hinder the athlete's ability to improve. That athlete adapts and improves their jumping ability similar to how we adapt to eating carbs by improving our insulin sensitivity. Our bodies are always trying to adapt to our most common habits. Now it's important to note that not all carbohydrate sources are created equally. So this leads into a discussion about fruit and how that relates to you as a diabetic. The biggest dietary drivers of insulin resistance are lipotoxicity, but also dehydration. So in order to correct this issue, you need a diet that both creates a low fat environment while also keeping you adequately hydrated. Fruit meets both of these requirements because fruit on average is 80 to 90% water with each serving having less than one gram of fat. And interestingly enough, the protein content of fruit is usually around three times the amount of the fat content. Now fruit will raise your blood sugar to varying degrees, but your numbers will progressively get better as you become more insulin sensitive. So the question now that we really have to deal with is how much fruit is too much? I often hear people say fruit has too much sugar but none of the people making this claim ever explain how much is too much. Let's say hypothetically you burn 2,300 calories per day and 75% of that was carbs. 
That would work out to being 431 grams of carbs, a total caloric value of 1,725 calories. Now, let's say you split that total amount of carbs between four meals. That would come out to 107 grams of carbs in each meal. That's 428 calories per meal from carbs. Anything above this number would be considered to be too much. One of the biggest differences between fruits and other carb sources like starchy foods is water content. For example, one pound of cantaloupe is 37 grams of carbs, whereas one pound of sweet potato is 94 grams of carbs. You'd have to eat two and a half pounds of cantaloupe to get the same amount as the sweet potato. If your concern is over consuming sugar, you're much more likely to do it with starchy foods rather than raw fruits. You only have but so much space in your stomach and with fruit, you're gonna be filling most of that space with water. It's like the strategy of drinking a gallon of water a day in order to improve blood sugar and drop body fat and things of that nature. The only difference is with fruit, you're eating your water rather than drinking it. I am a high raw vegan nutritionist and fitness coach specializing in metabolic health and chronic illness reversal. And over the years, I've had a lot of success helping people to reverse conditions like diabetes as well as get off a variety of different medications and improve their well being. Hit the link in the description box below to book a call with me and follow me for more high raw vegan, plant based diet tips.